welcome ladies. So day two and we're on our sacred number two conversation. We have a very, very special lady in the house who is going to share an incredible journey and story with us around healing the body, around mindset, around really what it takes to to heal this physical body and we're going to dive into lots of different um, elements, maybe some stuff that you haven't heard before, maybe some stuff that you have, maybe some stuff that might even, yeah, shock you a little bit. But it's, we're going to go into some really important stuff and I'm super excited to share this space with Hilda because I myself have been on such a massive journey, which some of you may know, some of you may not, maybe you're new to my work as well. But it's just been such a massive journey of clearing out this physical vessel and truly coming home to really how we're meant to be living in this body which um which goes way beyond the whole thing of just healthy eating which we hear so much so yeah i'm really super excited to dive into this and to bring hilda on shortly like i always do i'm just gonna do a little connection so we can just be really present with where we are and just chime the little the little chimes and bring our focus and presence to our heart space so we just do three breaths and tune in allowing yourself to just release that breath and let anything just release on the out breath and breathe in on that in breath breathing that spirit in that life in that light in connecting with your light and this just allows us to bring our our attention to the moment, our energy to this moment, our presence, and be here now. Mm. Mm. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to bring on our gorgeous goddess, number two of the day. So I'm just get this lined up. Okay, welcome Hilda. Hi, beautiful. Thank you for having me. Ooh, such a pleasure and it's so gorgeous to have you here. We made it, we got things to work. <laughs> so yeah, it's really beautiful to have you on Hilda and I'm super excited to um, yeah, have you share. I think let's begin with that space of you sharing a bit around your health journey because I know you've had an amazing health journey and it's deeply inspiring and um, yeah, adore your work. So yeah, if you would be yeah happy to share some of really where it started for you, this healing journey, where it all began, what was going on for you? Absolutely. Um, it's a rather long story and it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's actually as long as a whole book. Like I wrote a book about the whole journey, but... I'll, I'll take you through like the really short version just to kind of paint a picture a little bit about what we usually live, what's possible, but also I was not that special. I'm not that special. You know, I, I was just living my life like everybody else. I was a mom of two children. I had my own business, an interior architect. I was really successful. We had a cabin. We had two cars. We had a boat. You know, it's like the regular. I had um, breast implants, I went and did my facials, high heels, regular, very fit. I was a spinning instructor, I was an aerobic instructor, and in general, I even thought that I had a healthy life, you know, that I, that I was eating nothing because it was reflecting what everybody else was eating. So I was the norm, I was the norm, and what I saw happening around me when I started to get sick. Now, I didn't know back then all the early warning signs. You know, looking back, it's easy to see how from you were little, um, you know, how you were affected by what you live in your family dynamic, what you think about yourself, what you eat. I was a heavy smoker. I ended up being a heavy drinker on the weekends. Um, you know, and this is what people did. It's like an escape route type of life. And, mm -hmm. and what I saw was the sicker I got, the more I needed this to go away. But I had no idea what that meant. So I thought numbing symptoms, pushing everything in would again make everything okay, that I didn't have to face it. So I went the regular route, right? I started um, having ulcers. I, I started 
getting swollen in my feet, in my hands. I couldn't make a fist. I couldn't bend my arms. I, I, I was tired all the time. In general, I knew I was not healthy. But I had a doctor that was very eager to give me anything I wanted for those symptoms to go away. And I was taking medication for anything you can imagine. I mean, insomnia, I took it. Inflammation, I took it. Uh, mm. Ulcers, antibiotics, I took it. I went that route. And I'm not sitting here because I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to a doctor or take their medicine. I'm just saying, for me, I became one of what I saw around me, and that was go to the doctor, take a pill, hope it will go away. Changing nothing about my lifestyle, changing nothing about my thoughts, nothing about my diet at all. Nobody told you anything. And I was the one in the middle of this, as I got sicker from the medications, started questioning myself. Like I was admitted to hospital many times. I was admitted for anxiety attacks, for heart palpitations, mm -hmm. Um, you know, inflammation was so bad. It was through the roof. They thought I wasn't going to make it. They put me in hospital and they served me milk, you know, any type of dairy, meat, Coke. And it was me who kind of started thinking, oh my God, what's really going on here? There was like something within me that just couldn't see a way out of that. And I was always solution based within myself, you know. Uh, meaning I was the one that was used to finding solutions within my work, within the family dynamic. I was always the one that kind of took responsibility to finding a way out. And I think that probably saved my life because mm -hmm. I came to the point where I thought, okay, so if I am going to take charge here, then what do I need to do? And I was looking around the hospital and all I could see was very sick people that was doing crazy amount of surgery that was taking a lot of medications, being told they would never get healthy again. I was diagnosed with severe rheumatoid arthritis, told that it would be a wheelchair for the rest of my life and that I would never work again. I would never walk regularly again. And me, I mean, they were talking to me. I was like the fitness instructor. I was like, and I'm like, I'm shocked. Like, what are you telling me? So how do I get my life back? And they're like, you won't, like ever get used to it. And probably a part of my ego as well saved, you know, my ass in that moment because I knew that I needed to do something. Like I, I really didn't care what it was because I wasn't, I didn't know about, see, this was before Facebook. There was no raw food movement that we knew about. It was barely in the beginning of owning a laptop. So there was something called CureZone, which is a forum, forums were very, um, uh, popular. It was like the thing before Facebook and before YouTube. So there were God sent people that went on there and shared their journey. So you could always go on there and see what half crazy things other people had shared and try to pick up something different. So this is what I started doing. And I started meditating and I started reading Louise Hay's books. And I, I was called to that side. I, I was trying to kind of survive the shock of mm -hmm. having to leave my life. I cried myself to sleep, you know, for weeks over having to let go of my business, all of that. Friends not showing up, family not showing up. People don't know what to do with sick people, literally. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know what to do with sick people. So they just pull away. And I woke up one morning because I was taking drugs into my stomach. Like I had a needle that I, I needed to do this myself three times a week. You know, these are, these are heavy drugs that they put people on. They're immune suppressant. So you're literally open, you know, to just flip over at any time. And okay. I, I was on them for, for, for years, not many, many years, but say two to three years, I was heavily medicated and at the same time awakening. So I woke up one morning and I could just see this dream that I have, this whole barrel of all of my medication blowing up in my face. It was like I woke up with a startle from spirit, like, hey, you need to stop everything. And at the time I was going to university because I thought, oh, I should have a new profession because I'm too stressed. 
but I had no idea that what it was doing was just chasing another what I thought I needed to do. So I was going to go for being a journalist, you know, I started studying and stressing myself out. And that day is when everything changed. The day that I woke up, I sat down on my coach, my couch in my house. And when my husband came home, I was laying there and, and this was, I was supposed to be at school. And he said, what's going on? And I said, I stopped all medications today. I quit school. And I'm going to lay here until one out of two things happen. Either I die or I get better and I don't care which. And I really didn't care which, like I didn't care which because I was in such despair. I was crying every night saying, please God, take me, like, take me out of this misery. So for me, it was a life saving experiment that I was wrong to. I mean, I was at the bottom, like this was my rock bottom everything. I had two children to live for. I had a husband to live for. And I was always very eager about life. You know, I was always the happy girl. I was always, like I said, solution based and, and positive. So it was very strange for me to feel like everything became black and dark. And there was no way out, or at least there was no main street way out. There was no, I had to change everything. So from that day, started the journey that became more hell. My, my book is called From Hell to Inspired, so I'm using that word as mm -hmm. I as my help. And stopping all medication is not something that I recommend anyone do unless they have mm -hmm. guidance, you know, or know what they're doing. Because what happened to my body was shocking. I mean, it really showed me how sick I really was because I hadn't seen that. I had been numbing down every symptom for so long. So now I had a couple of years or at least two to three laying in bed, so inflamed in every joint, even my jaw, I couldn't open it. Like I couldn't open my mouth. I could, I had to be carried to the bathroom. I, I could not do anything because my body was in inflammation shock. And mm. that's when I started getting really desperate, you know, and I, searched I, I came across um avocado wolf you know I, I started learning a little bit about raw food i had looked into fasting and i even started water fast see this is how you go when you when you experiment on yourself so thank god we don't have to do that anymore we know now because people like me walk that but i went through anything i mean i i water fasted for six days while smoking and taking medication. Ooh. Yeah, because wow. I came across fasting and I thought, ooh, this is cool, but I had no knowledge. I, I knew this is why I'm so you know, eager to express my truth on all levels. Mm -hmm. They need to understand that information can't just be taken in from anyone and then just put right into you. You need to connect with where, you know, where you're at. So long story short, yeah. shorter, went from experimenting with fasting i went with juice fasting i cleansed from you know for parasites like you won't believe what came out of me i mean tons of parasites i did liver flushing every 10 days for two years i literally lived in the bathroom and this is i think the most crazy part about the story is i had a diagnosis that so many people have i've lived a life that so many people have but the road back, when you really let go of everything and allow your body to do this natural and to see how much crap is inside of us, this is where I'm not special. Like I, a lot of other people, like most people that come to me with a lot of pain and suffering and, and labels of chronic and, and suppression and it's, it's the same thing. This is where we ended up, you know? So from there, my road went through more and more raw food, I experimented with everything you can imagine. From, you know, I have even the hyperbaric, chain, you know, portable chamber in my house. I, there, there was not a machine from a Rife machine. There's nothing almost invented that I didn't have in my house. Like I really invested in, in doing stuff and using machines. But the thing is, the more I walk and the longer I walk, the more simpler it's gotten in the sense that simplicity has come through you know 
and mm. my connection with spirit has become stronger. And this is this is what I speak more than just getting out of pain. You know, it's it's the empowerment of being able to connect with with life force or God or the universe, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. That's that's where it's all at. It's our it's an emotional. And I'm looking back now, I started at the physical, <laughs> but hey, the last five years, and this is me being raw for twelve years now. I've been living on fruits only and herbs for the last seven years. And the last three or four has been deeper than any years before that. And it's been an emotional only ride that has affected my physical deeply. Mm. So we're pioneers in this. We're walking a walk that I don't think anyone has done before us. Not that humans before us hasn't been connected and grounded and lived in nature. But they have not come from deceased world, from programming, from living in what we're living. They never came from that because this is new. You know. Mm. So this is what I think is 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 a huge message in a story like this because there's so much that you cannot resonate from logic. You can't say, but before they did this or this isn't natural, or there's nothing about this that's natural. It's not even natural with juicing. What's natural is pick the fruit and eat it. Mm. But being inflamed and being in pain and being stiff and sick and tired of living, it's not natural either. And this is why we're walking a path that's so special, you know, I think for us. And and we're walking towards the feminine. And this is what I like about this, mm. the woman, what I've been doing. I used my masculine side my whole life because I mm-hmm. thought that that's where the strength was, or I thought that that's what I needed to do to survive in what I could see around me. You know, living with narcissism, and and this is also what I spend my time on. You know, helping people through um, narcissistic abuse, or and now we're called to connect with our feminine. And the feminine is the nurturer. So the feminine is food from nature. The Mm -hmm. feminine doesn't connect with killing. The feminine doesn't connect with abuse or torture in any way. So I think it's us women that are called forth in that matter. So so I'm talking a little bit off topic here, but I, it's, it's a large topic, my story, to kind of cram mm-hmm. into it, but I hope that gave you a short Yeah, yeah the, it's so powerful. And I think, no, I think you are on topic because I think also with everything that's unfolding on our planet, mm-hmm. I think we are truly seeing that, no, now is the time for the divine feminine to rise, yeah. you know? And actually it's that thing of, yeah, and we are in this 3D physical body and we have to clear her out so we can tune back into source and to our true self and to our higher self and and really exactly. get to grips with this healing journey. Absolutely. Right? Like all the judgment about the parasites as well. It's like, you know, it might sound gross and scary, but I me myself, like the last few years, I have cleared out crazy amount of parasites, like some like two meters long. And people are like, how can that how has that come out of your body, Ariana? How and more? I'm like, what is in here is like, you know, we have to tune back in to really like this ecosystem, right? If we've been living in the acidic, toxic world like you were sharing, of course it's just going to be full of waste and it's not going to be healthy and alkaline and feminine. And so I so resonate with that, Hilda. And thank you for sharing that, coming back to the, yeah, the yin, the feminine. And I think, and I think it's amazing because we have had a world where we have a lot of harsh energy, greed, you know, uh, control, all of what we see is kind of coming to the surface now to heal. You know, it's like a purging, like the parasites are coming up. But then we've had another movement, more of a new age type that has been very spiritually focused. And in my world, mm-hmm. there was a lot of great things about that. But the physical body has been 
overlooked or even not seen as very a very spiritual aspect of you. So seeing a lot of more of the girl, like, you know, um, what should you say, like grouping of, 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 of humans, I feel that, you know, we are spirits, we're, we're spiritual beings having a human experience right here. So to me, it's like, well, I'm going to be spirit only again soon enough. I mean, ooh, like we come to this world, we live, we die, get over it, right? I mean, it happens and it's quick and we're not really here that long. So while we're here in my world, I would never come here in a physical body if it wasn't to actually have a physical experience. So to mm -hmm. me, spiritual experience I can have is to be really connected in my body. This is why I'm here. This is what's special about being human. Mm. And when you look in nature and when you ground yourself, you are calling in the physical body. You're grounding yourself on the earth. You're honoring that. And what are you doing? You're connecting with the mother. You're connecting with mother earth. It's the feminine, it's the feminine power that is calling us back to nature. And that, I think also, we can only do really deeply through honoring our temple, honoring our body, because this body is mm -hmm. part of Mother Earth. We, we go back to dirt. Our physical body becomes dirt. This is, this is where we came from, and this is where the physical is going to end up when we leave it, or when we, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that was huge for me in healing. Nature, walking barefoot mm -hmm. in nature gave me a perspective mm -hmm. that overgoes anything. And I think that's the power of women, that we have the ability, the resources to connect on a different level because we are the nurturer. We are the ones that are you know, building families, taking care of children bearing children so so yeah I mean that came later for me uh, when I started being able to walk a little bit again it's the first thing I did I started doing a little bit and I asked another thing I see a lot of people are struggling they're kind of sitting down waiting to get better because then they're gonna get their life back no you get your life back by living it from where you're at in the moment right exactly and yeah Hilda I feel like yeah, everything you were saying is so it's so powerful and it's so necessary to hear this, you know. It's the thing of like we were talking about this morning actually on our first on our first conversation, it's that responsibility, like it's our responsibility, this body temple and and the whole thing of yeah, that connection with Mother Earth, like she is everything, like what we do to us, like ourselves, we're doing to our planet. It's just like and now is the time. It's like if now isn't the time, then you know, it's just like it's just time to awaken to that to this greatness within all of us, you know? It's that power, like, look at your journey, look at our journeys, like what we've overcome, the strength that we hold in this in this body is so incredible. But of course, like, and I know you work so much with the empowerment and the mindset, so maybe we can go on to that part of it, because obviously that has such huge impact on people, yeah, taking the action and actually doing what needs to be done instead of spinning around in circles which I did for years on bad diets, eating loads of fat and protein and all this crap that got me even sicker. But I thought I was getting better, but I was just suppressing myself. So yeah, can, can we into that bit? It's a tricky thing, the mindset, because you can always talk about mindset in a general, in a general way and say, well, do these affirmations or think this or just do it, you know, or make a decision, then go for it, find your why, and then go for it. And still, people are struggling because everyone is so unique in what they've lived and why they do what they do. But there are similarities, of course. I mean, we tend to sabotage ourselves constantly. Like, so if I, so if you were really sick and I told you, okay, so eat grapes only for, for three weeks. Like if you were my client and I say, eat grapes only for, for three weeks. That is such a simple thing. A child, two-year-old can do it. All you need to do, get the grapes, sit down, open your mouth, chew, swallow, repeat. There is nothing complicated or hard about it. Mm -hmm. But to most people, it's so hard, they can't even do it. 
because of this. All about this. And the reasons can be so many, so many. The solutions can be similar. So there's, I mean, if, if you're that type of person that are always falling off the wagon, always falling off the, off the wagon, there are a couple of things that's going on with you. Number one, yeah, you might not have a reason good enough. Like you don't get your ass off of the couch because you just don't feel like you have anything, you know, to, to, to have a good life for. But most of the time, this is a combination of parasitic infestation, fungus, they're craving yeah. their breads and pasta, you know, all the complex sugars, all the pastry, that's what they want the most. And they want the dairy, the mucus forming, so that you don't hurt their house. Because it's all about our internal environment. And this is, and, and remember me to mention the parasites because that's really about the environment. I have like a crazy parasite story, one that is just unbelievable. But back to this. So the cravings come also from what you're living on the inside. Um, then it comes from you not thinking you're worth it. You know, all the different patterns that we go into. Maybe you're on disability and you just don't, you're afraid of what you're gonna do or that you might have to go back to work. I mean, all the things that are playing in our subconscious. Mm -hmm. And this is why mm -hmm. the spiritual journey, including forgiveness, which is huge, gratitude, which is even easier, mm -hmm. you know. It's like it, healing, is, it's not one thing. It's like you can't sit down and say to God, oh, please heal my body, but I want to keep my shitty job. Or please heal my body, but I want to stay in my abusive relationship. It doesn't work like that. Healing is healing on all levels. When you ask for it, yeah, you're going to get it. So you better get ready and prepared to actually get what you've been asking for. And no, it's not going to be easy. And no, it's not going to be fast. But the mindset is, who said it would be? And why does it need to be? And who cares if it's fast or easy? Oh, but it's uncomfortable. It's you know, I have to go through cleansing symptoms when I change my diet. Yeah. Oh, but that's hard. Yeah. And it's painful. Yes. Because we're used to escape those feelings. We're used to escaping every part of our life that's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And this is what the society has been telling us. Again, go towards the smile. Take a pill if you are in pain. You know. And that's why we seize responsibility, like we don't take responsibility. Because most people know what they need to do. Like if I sit in front of someone that is eager to heal and they're hurting, and you ask them, can you think of one thing that you could do that would be better for you health-wise? Everybody knows. Everybody knows. So we're in this information, what I see, we're in the... You know, the time, the era of, of information. Information is crazy. There's so much information about everything we're talking about. So it's not that we don't have access to information that can take us to the next level. Even bonding and communicating and, 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 and committing. It's, it's so easy. But taking responsibility isn't. Yeah, it's like that re it's like the maturing process again, isn't it? It's like maturing into that place of actually and I know I went on a big journey with that. It's like not having to come to that place of being an adult. And like and like you say, it's so interesting because a kid, yeah, would sit and eat those grapes, right? But because as an adult we grow, we take all that conditioning and all that stuff on. And like we've got to break that down, right? The voices, yeah, like, oh no, I'll wait, it's not the right time, I'm not ready. And it's like, but the body is telling us. The body voice is the one that we have to listen to, right? Yeah, and we're living from the outside in. And this is the big shift that I see that we go through now and that we need to go through. Mm -hmm. We need to get from living from the outside in to the inside out. So if I, most people I talk to, the first thing they think about when, when it's about changing the diet, okay, so for all listeners, first of all, this is what I'm about. I'm about eating 100% raw food from nature. I mean, we were not born with a cooker up our butt. There's just no way that I would ever believe that anything cooked is anything but altered, 
chem it's chemically it's 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 changed chemistry. And I've seen studies saying that even putting something cooked into your body will raise your level of white blood cells, meaning the body sees it as an invader, meaning there's a low grade inflammation mm -hmm. happening just from eating cooked food. So just if we're just gonna, you know, sit down, look at nature, have a connection with God, we realize we're, we're meant to eat raw food. I mean, it's just food. It's not, it's, it shouldn't even be called raw food. It's food. And then you can say, cook. That's so true. Yeah, just food, right? And I don't even want to say organic. That should also just be food. I want to have it called food, and then I want to have it called sprayed food. Right. Right. You know, so we need to first of all get back to what's real. Remember your childhood when the plums were hanging in the garden of your grandma or whatever. It was just that it was just food. So this is what I promote, first of all. You know, you there is no diet that you need to do. There is no nothing to figure out really. I mean food it, it's not like Oh, I need to eat this for that and this for that. I have to figure out. No, it's just food. Just eat it. If you like it, eat it. If you if you want to, have two. If you want ten, have ten. Eat till you're full. You know, simplify everything. Mm. But I see that that is too simple for us. We complicate not only the diet because we've been told to have this much on a plate of this and this and diet plans and they have names. You know. Um, but the thing is, what this come from, the thought, um, the line of thought that this came from, was um, how we make it into something that it isn't, right? We just make it into a social. Like, what people are mostly afraid of is, what are the other people going to say? Or I start working with something, someone on, in March, and they're like, what am I going to eat for Christmas? Right. You know, and they're so worried about the office party or their friends or what they're going to say or the, it's like from the outside. So we're living in response to the outside. So we're chasing life instead mm -hmm. of, of creating it from the inside. And it will and show us the right way. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And just what was coming through for me is that, yeah, it's that thing of we're putting other people's opinions in front of our own well-being and our own joy and happiness and and health and life. And like I know I've been there on my journey at the beginning. You know, you yeah, it's like that judgment thing. But then it's like you know, I got to a point where I was like, hang on a minute, like this is my life. Like I've got dreams and passions and desires here, and like I'm gonna make them happen. And if I keep worrying about what that person's going to think of me, then it's not going to happen. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's why just it more important. It's like, why would anything be more important than our health? Right. Only if we don't love ourselves. Only if we don't feel worthy. Only if we're broken. Only if our emotions are attached to, you know, it's it's an, it's addictive. We have addictive personalities. We we. We are people pleasers. So instead of being of service, like we're walking into the feminine, which is being of service, we're people pleasers, where we're doing anything and everything for the feedback, meaning we're doing it to fit in, or to be acknowledged, or to be seen, validated, heard, you know. And this is, this is the pattern. This is the mindset. And that's why I say it's, it's so deep, because Everyone has a family dynamic. Everyone has a friends dynamic, work dynamic, what they've lived. Some have been abused. Some, you know, have grown up thinking money is evil. Or, I mean, there's so many reasons why we have barriers so we can't just flow into beautiful health. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it starts with that, connecting with our heart. Connecting with our heart would allow us to live from the inside out, from us, being authentic, mm -hmm. being authentic. That's another big one. I see thyroid especially. So many people with thyroid issues, we're talking about authenticity. We're talking about our voice and not only expressing it like I'm doing now, but expressing our truth, expressing our authenticity. Right, yeah. yeah. That's 
Huge, Hilda. Yeah, I mean, I grew up in a family like my mum, my two sisters, all had thyroid disease, and I, I was on borderline. I, I knew I was nearly given medication, and it's when I started my journey, and I was like, no, hang on a minute. Again, it just didn't resonate. I was like, no, I'm going to go away, and I'm going to find a way to heal myself. And he was like, well, if you don't come back and get medication, I said, I won't be coming back. Yeah. And I did it, you know, and I went, and I did it, and I found it. And it's like, since healing all of it, you know, this endocrine glands, like, it's just an opening. It's like, okay, let's stop holding it back and let's speak speak truth and come back to what's real in raw. It's, it's it's a fresh thing. I mean, speaking your truth and and also living authentically. It's not common sense doesn't make it common practice. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, we're not used to following common sense because we're not used to thinking on our own rather than reflecting on what we see that the masses are accepting because there is a lot of ridicule and, and, and this is where you need to find your inner strength. If you want to take back your own power and you want to live it and express it, I, I truly believe it's necessary for, for, for great health to express who you are and not suppress who you are mm. you know and people are living suppressed because somebody told them when they were young that they couldn't sing or somebody said something i mean a child will take in comments in such a different way than an adult might have intended it to be expressed so it's not even about how it happened and who did what it's always about taking the responsibility. And we have to look at our own lives to see where we're at. I, people come to me and they say, I love myself. And I'm like, I don't think you do. Oh, but I do, I love myself. I'm like, no, not thinking it. Like, I really do, Hilda, I love myself. And I'm like, your life is not telling us that. Your life is not showing us that you love yourself. You know, yeah, if, yeah. if the map and the terrain doesn't match, the terrain is always right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you want to know where you're at, yeah, if you want to know where you're at in your life, look at what you're living. If you're living in a relationship that's not optimal, you know what you think about yourself, and you know your values. You know, you know a lot about yourself. Not judging, you know, nothing like that. But we can't take responsibility unless we are willing to first of all see the truth and to realize that we have the power to change it we can't find better health or a better diet or have someone guide us or read a book about it if we're not willing to realize mm -hmm. that we're the ones that are not actually doing it you know no. so, yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so powerful, Hilda. And the pieces around, yeah, and, and I saw it in my own life, you know, relationships. I put myself through all these toxic relationships and just, you know, giving away my power, codependency, eating shit food because I was suppressing myself. And I journeyed on that for years until, again, it was like another awakening to, like, is this really what I want? Is this aligned with who I really know I'm here to be? No. So yeah, it's that thing, and yeah, sure, it, it can be tough, it can be hard to just, you know, you've got to let people go, let people go and, yeah, really claim what is what is our truth that's on our path. And mm. stepping into our womanhood, stepping into our goddesses, step, stepping into our sexy. We, 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 we just need to take our sexy back. We need to walk tall, we need to wear the robe, we need to wear the invisible tiara, you know, and, and bring in that energy. What I experienced in my life was I was pretty good at, well, I was always very good at doing what I set out to do. So that was not the thing that I, I wouldn't fall off. Like I never fell off. But I very easily ended up in a corner because I had been the one being ridiculed for what I did. So I, I, I always kept my mouth shut, shut. And if people said something negative about what I was doing or my brain drink or whatever it was, I would never take, you know, I would, I would never speak back to anything because they were the masses and I was the freak. And I kind of accepted that even within my own family to the point where I would have dinner parties at my house 
<coughs> excuse me, see my thyroid is coming. <laughs> when I speak something like that, that's yeah. that. I, I always feel it. Yeah, so connected with that. So yeah. I would sit there and I would prepare for them, you know, meat and dairy, whatever they wanted. And I would sit at the end of the table with my green smoothie. I had years with going green, by the way. You know, I started with a green pH miracle movement. Uh, and it took years for me to realize, first of all, I was 50% of that household. I was the woman of the kitchen. You know, I had value. I had power. I had a say in this. And it took me years until I could just step up and say, you know what? I'm preparing this food. This is what I choose to eat. We're going to have to draw a line in the middle here. And my kitchen is vegan. Live with it. You know, and, 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 this is, and it worked out. I mean, that's, but it was me that needed to do that. It, it, it had to come for me. You know, mm -hmm. and not from judging others. It was through what I wanted. That's the big difference. You know, it's a big piece, isn't it? It's like having that. That you've got to dig deep into that courage and like really just anchor into it and ground into. Yeah, what is what is it that you know you want to feel in your body? Because the thing is, I remember, God, if I had followed all these people that were telling me, oh, Ariana, stop detoxing, stop doing this, stop. And it's like, well, actually, I would have stayed in a similar place. And, you know, I'm glad that I listened to myself. I was like, no, I'm doing this. And the moment you know, they put fear in you, right? And you're like, oh, my God, what am I doing? Yeah. Should I be doing this to my body? And it's like, well, no, I really am meant to be cleaning my body. So just stay true to that and, and follow that. But, yeah, such a powerful conversation, Hilda. So amazing. I just feel like to, yeah, to bring our yeah empowering conversation to her yeah we need to do a parasite we need to do the parasite story yeah share share with that like, let's share this yeah let's do this story too yeah really because this is actually quite really? aligned with what you were saying it's perfectly aligned with what you were saying because i remember i had girlfriends way back like 11 12 years ago after maybe i had detoxed for a couple of months or like oh you should stop now this isn't good you've been detoxing so long two months you know you know now i'm like 12 years later my body is still detoxing so it's you know it's like a never-ending story you know it, it's it's not something that you do it's something that the body does if it chooses and if it needs to see this is the thing you can't you can't eat or drink something that's going to make your body detoxify. All you can do is step back and allow the body to do what it chooses to do. If you literally almost gives it nothing because it loves that, like the animal kingdom. They lay down, they pass, they get well, they move on. They don't put their mind or their thoughts into it. You know, it's an instinct. But just to show you the depth of this, I mean, I had been parasite cleansing for years. And I was filled with it. And I do believe. If you've taken antibiotics, I was on cortisol, you know, prednisone. You're feeding, you're feeding, you're feeding that environment. It, it, they reside in your whole body, all different levels, all different kinds, from worms to smaller parasites, you know, even in your blood, bacteria, viruses. The load is crazy. Just from vaccination, from when we were young, we're literally, these critters are literally put in us through the vaccines. So depending on your environment on the inside, they're going to continue to grow. And then one thing is going to be put on top of the other. But for years, I had been doing that. And I had probably been raw for, okay, so say this is four years ago, three years ago, maybe, four, three, four years ago. So I've been raw for eight years. So I say that. So that can't be far from the truth. And I was into doing a lot of dry fasting. I've always loved dry fasting. You know, I don't promote them too long, but um, I think it's intermittent yeah. fasting. I think it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I've done a lot yeah. of fasting summits. Mm -hmm. I've talked a lot about fasting. You know, I've been on shows to do that. So that's like a whole different topic that I'm very passionate about. And I had done a four day dry fast, which, you know, I had that five day, you know, and I was not pushing too hard, but I, I, I like to experiment on myself. That's how I got where I'm at. You know, it's like, I'm, this is my service. If, if something needs to be tried, I'm first in line and say, I'll do it. You know, it's like, <laughs> I'm so excited. Like and I remember when I started learning about herbs, it was like, I got this herb in the mail and it says like two capsules. And I was like, I wonder what's going to happen if I take eight, 
you know, it's like I was always the experiment. I wanted to see, you know, how mm -hmm. what would happen. Yeah. So I did the dry fast, and there was nothing special that I could feel. The day after, or even it was two days after, I am sitting in bed with my hubby, and we're watching a movie, and you know, um, and I feel like there's something going on. Like I, I, I remember I just told him. I need to go to the bathroom. I think I need to go to the bathroom. So I just snuck out. And we have like an ensuite. So I just stepped right into the bathroom. And I put my hand back there. Don't ask me why. I mean, this is all instinctive. And oh yeah. my God, something's wiggling. Literally wiggling. Oh my God. So I grab whatever that was. I pull it up. And it's a one foot is scary, round worm. That's what they call it. Very normal. A lot of people have it. One foot long, and that's about 30 centimeters for that was that, you know, in the metric. And I was holding it, and it was literally wiggling in my hand. It was very much alive. So still alive? Alive, very much alive. A big wow. alive worm. So what do you do with that? Like, Ooh. what do you do with that information? How do you process it? I was just standing there. And I just remember I went to the tub, the bathtub, and on the side of the bathtub on the tiles, I put it down. So it was laying there swirling. And I, and I just opened the door to the bedroom again, and I hear my husband saying, parasite, huh? He probably knew me. And I'm like, yeah, give me, give me the phone. So he gave me the phone. I took pictures. Um, I flushed it down the toilet. And I was literally in shock. Like it took me two to three days to process it to even, I went through that with my husband too. Like, should I share this? Like, is this too, like, how do you share this? Like what's going on? And I got to process and I got to live and experience what I've been talking about. It's all about the internal environment. Now, dry fasting, this one, okay, to put it this way, these ascaries, they reside at the very top of your small intestine, so right below your stomach itself. Mm -hmm. This means that this little one, or big one, had to travel feet and feet through my intestinal system. Mm -hmm. before. This was fleeing, flooding, fleet, what is it, flooding. Yeah. This was mm -hmm. fleeing my body. This was seeking out where it could no, could no longer stay. There was nothing mm -hmm. there. It was completely you know, looking, it was trying to survive. But it also showed me it's much deeper when, you know, the parasites and how they, because they lay eggs and they're everywhere all the time. And as long as there's mucus in there, as long as there's environment that they can, they can survive in, they will. But we will never know who walks around with what. Because the difference with me is that I kind of chase them out. Usually people don't do that. But, uh, but yeah, it's it's a gross, it's yeah. gross. But it's it's still, you know, we just need to know what's going on. But it's the, this is it, isn't it? It's just like it's, I always think it's just getting real. You know, it's getting really real and really raw, which is what is going on right now. Yeah. And just being, but, but also it's you know, I think it's being honest with what is in this body. Like, you know, when I got on my parasite journey, it was life changing, and I realized the more I took back my power. Yeah. The more and I more I, I did dry fasting and I started to do fruit fasting and I was doing my juicing and really alkalizing my body and and just clearing stuff out and making space and doing my breath work and and then you know these things just did not want to be in me anymore. They were like, hang on a minute, like this is way too alkaline and way too healthy, get me out. And it's like, you know, it's a process, but it's it's an empowering one, right? You take back yeah. yourself, you take back your connection. Your truth, it's so it's profound. The key to everything. It's the key to everything. Mm. For anyone listening that's sitting on the fence or sabotaging yeah. themselves, you know, this is the key. What, what you what you're saying right now, because you need to take your back your power. You know, you're the only one who can change any of it. No, nobody else can. Doesn't matter how many videos you're going to watch or you're watching. If you're not going to implement, doesn't matter how much you know. If you're not going to execute, it doesn't matter how spiritually you feel if you're not going to practice we need to practice we need the practice we need to change how we feel how we think how we breathe 
you know, our habits, we, and it's up to us. And to me, that's true potential. Yeah. You, know, you can choose to look at it two ways. Change is hard, but it's either, you know, a cur you can see it as a curse or a blessing. Right. And it's also that thing of like change is, change is on our side. Like, you know, change is yeah. there for us. Like we are, we are here, aren't we? To change, to grow, to evolve. And, yeah. you know, I always fear change so much. And it's like, well, like maybe, maybe change is safe. It's like scary, right? It's scary and it is hard and it is like, whew. But it's, it's what's going to get you to that next point. And, you know, it's often having to do something that we would probably rather not do. But actually, like, you've got to weigh things up, haven't you? Like, how much do you want to be in that place or how much do you want to stay where, where you are? Yeah, so, and uh, that we talked about earlier that we're, we're used to running from struggle. I always mm -hmm. say honor the struggle. Honor the struggle. Anytime mm -hmm. you do something in your life showing you struggle it's gold it's gold it's showing you where your growth is it's showing you your potentials it's showing you which way to go go towards that struggle and walk through it you know we we, we need to clear our space mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right it's like the initiation the other way yeah 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 exactly it's like yeah i suppose it's that thing of being a that childlike spirit again right that fearlessness like just go i have a tiger yeah, yeah. And, and this is a big one because all also i think the body that we're living in with stress so we have low adrenals which gives a lot of anxiety and the adrenals affect the kidneys which is the sea of fear so we're literally from our physical situation walking around anxious with a lot of fear so just by changing your diet you will start healing all your glands which again will put you in a much better emotional state so which comes first the hen or the egg is always the question but whatever you're living even if you're living in a in a, in, a, in, a, in a relationship that's not optimal for you, or your work is not optimal for you, or your health is not optimal for you, changing your diet, walking towards eating more fruits and vegetables will affect every aspect of your life. Why? Because you will be able to connect more with you. You will be able to make better decisions for you. You will think and see more clearly. You will be more connected with the source. So this is why so many people see healing on so many levels when they change their diet because it doesn't mm. change just the physical because it's all connected like we can't we can never separate all of our bodies of course um, mm -hmm. but i think also it's the gentleness of the feminine that we need to focus more and more on and i haven't in my whole journey but i'm, I'm, I'm i've been doing it more mm. than the last couple of years because the universe is mm. calling for it like consciousness is changing so much and calling us forth and I think it also includes the pulling back from drama, the pulling back from our own mm. stories, you know, and being on it, trying to fix everything, trying to figure everything out and fixing everybody else and making sure everybody's happy. I think we need to yeah. pull back and be a little bit more goddess-like and, and just observe and hold the energy so that everything mm. can fall into place where it may for everyone, not fixing them, but just holding the energy and the space for our families and for our communities so that mm -hmm. they can walk through and figure it out by themselves. Mm, yeah, I think that's so powerful, Hilda. That that space holding it is. It's like we're shifting into the space now. It's like, yeah, it's time to rise up, right? It's time to rise up and just, yeah, be that space holder, be that feminine, like you said, that nurturer, that mother, and just be there for each other and just you know, be the guiding lights. Like at where I'm living now, I've got this little lighthouse opposite me and I see it every morning and every night and I'm just like, you know, it's yeah. the lighthouse. Just shine, you know, just shine and like be that energy and, and shift it and it's just so powerful. Absolutely. Oh, what a conversation. <laughs> it's been so amazing here. And I feel like that's a beautiful place to just bring everything to, you know, ending it on that piece around food, around diet. It's just everything. Food is the, just yeah. the game changer on so many levels, isn't it? You know, it really goes so much deeper. It not only clears out the physical body, but it impacts your, yeah, your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual health, everything. So, foundation, it's just the foundation of everything. Right. How you feed yourself, you know, just the word, you feed it. It, it. it literally is everything and reflects everything. Like we talked about also in the beginning, 
how you see yourself socially, how mentally connected, you know, I mean, or addicted you are to others. Mm -hmm. how we, I mean, it really reflects on everything. Yeah. It, it does. You know, the more you love yourself, the, the better you will eat because you'll no longer have the need to hurt yourself, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so absolutely. Yeah. Radical self love all the way, yeah. <laughs> oh, Hilda, well, thank you so so much for yeah taking the moment of just yeah to connect. It's been so beautiful, and um, yeah. How can ladies, if they want to find out more about you, where can they find you? Okay, so uh, my website is inspired by Hill, and I say Hill D because it's with an E. Uh, so inspired by Hill D dot com. Uh, is my website. Uh, you'll find Inspired by Hilda on Facebook. You'll find me on YouTube. You'll find me on Instagram. You'll find me pretty much anywhere. Um, my books are on Amazon, um, From Hell to Inspire, Know the Truth and Get Healthy, and the last one is called No More Bullshit, which is actually more of a spiritual book where I take mm. you from realizing the life that you're living, a lot of exercises, and ending up writing your own life manifesto. So it's like an empowering type of um, that book, the no more bullshit. So it's no more bullshit in, in a good way. Like we, we don't want to take that crap anymore. Um, yeah, amazing. Yeah, so that's 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 me. <laughs> Happy to connect. Awesome. So incredible, so incredible. Thank you so much, Goddess. Thank you, thank you <laughs> and so yeah, thank you for having me. And mm -hmm. good health to everyone that's listening. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll connect again soon. Yeah. So much love. <laughs> okay, bye.